Hey, this is Steve, E6WZ. A little 160 meter uh, three stage bandpass filter here, uh, which has little trimmer caps in it that I can use to adjust the uh, response curve across the, uh, across the band. It's uh, on the oscilloscope here, what I've got set up is you'll see on this uh, cursor line here, this is the bottom of the 160 meter band. That's 1800 kilohertz, and up here is uh, 2000 kilohertz, the top of the band. So using this, uh, this response curve shown on the scope, I can you know, really uh, just dial this curve in exactly, um, exactly how I want it. As I say, I uh, dug this out of the um, uh, junk box, and in the, in the early days when I had built it, I, I really just uh, adjusted the, um, the filter based on listening to the radio and just uh, dialed it for maximum uh, response on the 160 meter band. Um, but what I wanted to do here is not so much talk about the filter specifically, but just show the setup that I've uh, got here uh, to uh, get this response curve on the oscilloscope using basically just the, the um, signal generator that has a sweep function and a two-channel two oscilloscope. You know, this is far from new. This is an old school method and uh, there's other, others that describe this setup. But I just thought I'd share with uh, you guys uh, how I set it up. You know, normally, of course, you'd be using like a tracking generator and a spectrum analyzer, which are, you know, costly gear. But, you know, perhaps, um, you know, lots of us have an, a signal generator and a scope. And I thought this would be handy to just have online um, a summary of how I uh, set this up to get this kind of response curve. You know, you use it for any kind of tune circuit. Anyway, I'll show you what I did here. So the first thing we're going to do is set up the uh, signal generator on channel 1 to uh, be in sweep function. And um, we can set our start and stop uh, frequency. In our case, let's use 1 megahertz to 2 megahertz because we want to sweep the 160 meter band. But I'll show in a moment we can vary that while we've uh, subsequent to setting things up. We also, it's important to set the sweep time. We want to set that for about a millisecond. And so what will happen is every millisecond we're going to sweep, the generator will sweep from 1 megahertz to 2 megahertz and then shoot back and do it again and again and again every 1 millisecond. The uh, generator I have has a built-in trigger in the sweep function. And it, it triggers on the, I read the manual, and it triggers on the rising edge of a square wave. So it'll, it'll output a trigger which will be a rising edge every 1 millisecond. And I put that on channel 2, so that'll be a trigger. So therefore, on the scope, when we, um, on channel 1, are looking at the sweep, uh, we'll trigger on channel 2 so that at the beginning of, we can, and we can set the scope up so that at one end of the scope, we're at the, at the beginning of the scan, uh, and at the uh, far right side of the screen, we're at the end, so that we know that the full scan on the screen goes from 1 megahertz to 2 megahertz, or whatever our top frequency is. Let me show you how I set that up. I use the uh, Siglent 1025 uh, signal generator and we'll in this case uh, go to uh, the sweep function on channel 1. You'll notice there's something called the stop frequency. I've set that to 2 megahertz, 2000 kilohertz and the thing called the start frequency. I've set that for uh, 1 megahertz. That's the range we're going to use right now. Having said that, I'll show later that um, you know we can vary that in real time to uh, change the span on the uh, on the oscilloscope. Another thing um, I have here, as I mentioned, that the, this, this uh, generator has a trigger out, uh, which I've toggled on, and that uh, triggers, um, according to the manual, on the rising edge of a square wave. And the output for that trigger is on the back of this particular unit, and I have that going to uh, channel uh, 2 on the, uh, on the scope. Another thing I have done is um, chosen to uh, 50 ohm lo load output from the signal generator since um, uh, my uh, bandpass filter in this case is um, designed for a 50 ohm uh, input, so I wanted to make sure that was, uh, that was a match. You'll notice here as well, we can go linear or logarithmic. We want it linear. We want, a, we want this sweep to go linear so that we know when we trigger on the scope, one end of the scope is one megahertz, uh, and the other end is going to be two or whatever we choose, and therefore we know in the middle, for example, is exactly you know, 1.5, uh, so we can find ourselves. I'll show you how we do that. So here's the setup with the output from channel uh, 1 on the oscilloscope, the sweep, the sweep being uh, put into uh, channel uh, 1 of the, uh, of the scope here. And again on channel 2, shown in blue, is the trigger. And that's the uh, trigger which on the rising edge is uh, going to trigger 
uh, the beginning of the sweep and on the rising edge that's going to be the end of the sweep and it'll start over. So what I can do is I can change the, uh, the time base such that I can expand, if you can see the, uh, the trigger here, so that it's going to trigger the start and the end of our sweep exactly at the end of each uh, at the, uh, on the scope. And so now I know that uh, basically from the left side of the screen that's 1 megahertz and on the right side that's 2 megahertz. So let's pop the bandpass filter in and see what happens. Okay, we have the uh, bandpass filter now connected uh, between the uh, signal generator and the uh, scope. Uh, you know, for sure, some might be watching this and, and realize this is 100% offside in terms of the proper test setup with, you know, dangling leads and whatnot. Um, the fact is, uh, this is all I had right today for this experiment uh, this afternoon, but, but also, um, you know, 160 meters uh, introducing any aberrant noise or whatnot isn't, uh, isn't going to be a huge issue here for us today. But anyway, you can see uh, the response curve uh, on the uh, envelope, on the RF envelope, um, as we go across frequency. And if I change these trimmers as shown, you know, you can uh, see the response, uh, the response change uh, accordingly. Um, but of course, you know, normally we're, we're more used to seeing, um, uh, you know, rather than a complete uh, amplitude envelope uh, change, we're, we're used to more looking at a, at, at a response curve, a line. And well, we can do that. I mean, the way we do that simply is uh, we'll just rectify this uh, RF envelope with using a, uh, normally a DMOD probe, or we'll just build our own. Um, you know, really a DMOD probe is nothing other than a, a rectifier, a couple of uh, uh, signal diodes, uh, you know, some ger germanium diodes and a couple capacitors and, uh, you know, a, a resistor uh, for impedance matching. And, and um, so, you know, and I, you know, I just built one of those, built that same circuit up here. I mean, okay, look, this is, this is really, really ugly, but I mean, you know, I got a couple of little, uh, little, uh, I think these IN34 type signal diodes and a couple caps. So let me just insert this and we'll basically rectify this and turn it into a response curve. Okay, I've inserted that uh, demodulation um, circuit or the rectifier circuit between the, uh, uh, between the output of the uh, bandpass filter and the uh, input of the scope. So now we're basically rectifying that uh, RF envelope and we've got a nice uh, a voltage response curve and uh, this is where we started and you know we you know this is a lot n a nicer uh, a nicer to look at uh, for for adjusting the um, uh, the response the response curve. Uh, so again as we explained um, initially with the trigger set like this on full scale we know of course that's one megahertz that's two megahertz at the end of the band and we can compute um, you know exactly where 1.8 uh, megahertz uh, ought to be. Um, but what I can also do with the scope, I can change what we call the um, the end frequency, uh, the stop frequency. Rather than being 2 megahertz, I can dial it up to say 3. So now we're spanning from 1 to 3, of course. Now if we're 1 to 3, then that's uh, 2 megahertz. So there's 1.8 to 2 roughly. And again, we could compute that based on the, the number of divisions, knowing that that's 1 and that's 2. I could go up to 4, and of course there it's uh, stretched out even further. So, you know, you can, uh, you can subsequently adjust your, um, your uh, start and stop frequency. But how about we, um, to confirm where we are, let's do a, an old school trick called, uh, you know, putting a marker on here. And what we're going to do, I'm going to uh, uh, take the output from channel 2 on the signal generator and I'm going to set it to 1800 uh, kilohertz. And I'm basically going to inject 1800 kilohertz into uh, the um, input of the scope so that we'll uh, actually get a... Um, a response, uh, an interference response. In other words, this is sweeping, and whenever it uh, sweeps past the 1.8 uh, uh, megahertz uh, injected uh, uh, signal, it will either constructively or deconstructively uh, interfere and give us a blip here. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, what I've got is the signal generator set up to uh, generate a um, sine wave at 1800 uh, kilohertz on uh, the uh, channel 2 and I'm basically uh, injecting that together onto the same channel uh, 1 which is uh, currently sweeping. So every time it sweeps by 1800 you'll see there's either a constructive or deconstructive uh, um, uh, signal there. If I increase this to, I'm going to dial it up, there's 1900 and there's 2000. Of course we know that my sync goes from 1 uh, 
to three. That's what I set this currently at, one to three. So that's uh, exactly uh, two megahertz right there. And I can continue to dial it up uh, to, uh, that's currently 2.5, which is exactly what it, uh, what it ought to be. So that's a good way to just um, uh, know exactly. So now I know that right there, and I could actually take my cursor now, which would be kind of handy. I could take my cursor and, oops, sorry. I could move my cursor over here and I say, okay, I know that that is exactly 1.8 megahertz. And now I can use that to uh, be confident that that's my, uh, where, I, where I should see my frequency response. Anyway, there you go. Lots of fun with, uh, actually, this was just an experiment, some experimenting I did uh, this afternoon. It was kind of a snowy day and I thought, well, why don't I play around with the oscilloscope and the signal generator? Lots of fun. 73, Steve, B6WZ.